Hi everyone, in this video we'll be talking about lipoprotein metabolism and the transport of lipoprotein. So what comes in our mind when we hear the term lipoprotein? So it's simply lipid and protein, right? A combination of both. So inside the lipoprotein particles, there would be lipids such as cholesterol, triglycerides, phospholipid, etc. Also, there would be a protein part such as apolipoproteins. A combination of all of these is the lipoprotein. Now, let me introduce you to the lipoproteins. There are several types of lipoproteins which are found in our body and they have their distinct function and importance. So, first lipoprotein that we are going to talk about is chylomicron. Then, we'll talk about VLDL, IDL, LDL and HDL. VLDL stands for very low density lipoprotein. Whereas IDL stands for intermediate density lipoprotein, LDL is low density lipoprotein, while HDL is high density lipoprotein. When we say some density of the lipoprotein, we mean how much is the protein content or how much protein is there. For example, in HDL, the protein content is pretty much. It is way more than the VLDL or very low density lipoprotein. In order to understand that, we need to understand what is the composition of these particles. So let's talk about the major apolipoproteins present in these particles first and then we talk about the overall composition. So chylomicron has apolipoprotein A, apo B48, C and E. Whereas VLDL has apolipoprotein B100. So this is the difference between VLDL and the chylomicron. It also has apolipoprotein C and apolipoprotein E. Now after that, in IDL and LDL, we both have uh, ApoB100 and in HDL, we have majority of the lipoproteins. Now if you go over the overall con uh, composition of these particles, we would see that 90% of the chylomicron is triglyceride. Actually, the triglyceride composition is very high in case of VLDL and chylomicron. Whereas for LDL, the concentration of cholesterol is very high, almost 50% of it. So cholesterol has the highest density of cholesterol, whereas VLDL and um, chylomicron has the highest proportion of triglycerides. In contrast, HDL has higher proportion of apolipoproteins, almost 40% of it. So once we have an overview of the composition of these particles, let's see how these particles are synthesized, what are their functions, how are they metabolized and what is the turnover rate. So let's begin. Let's say we eat a food which is enriched in fats such as a cheesy burger and it would be metabolized inside our uh, GI tract, right? So in the intestine, the fat would be absorbed in form of micelles, right? Now in the intestinal epithelial cell, the substance which would be secreted from the intestinal epithelial cell is the chylomicron. So intestinal epithelial cell secretes chylomicron which is enriched in triglycerides. Other than triglyceride, it has cholesterol, ApoB48, ApoE and apolipoprotein C2. All of, all of these are the components of chylomicron, right? So chylomicrons are exclusively assembled in the intestinal mucosal cell and the most important thing about them is they do have triglyceride but these triglycerides are coming from our diet. All the triglyceride cholesterol that it has, it is coming from our diet. Now triglyceride account for 90% of the volume uh, of this chylomicron. So these are the two very important points about chylomicron. So this is the overall composition of the chylomicron as we have discussed. Now we wanted to understand what is the function of chylomicron. So chylomicron can circulate inside the bloodstream and eventually it would encounter the adipose tissue. Now its job is to deposit the triglyceride, uh, I mean deposit the fatty acids in the triglyceride when it encounters adipose tissue. So on the adipose tissue, there would be 
specific enzymes known as lipoprotein lipase. Now, one part of the chylomicron, which is apolipoprotein C2, would activate the lipoprotein lipase. Now, lipoprotein lipase is an extracellular enzyme that is anchored to a heparin sulfate on the capillary walls of many cell types and tissues, but majorly it is found in adipose tissue. And it is very important in terms of breaking down of triglycerides. So, the lipoprotein lipase activated by apolipoprotein C2 would be eventually breaking down the triacylglycerol into free fatty acids and these free fatty acids would be stored inside the adipose tissues. So the major function of lipoprotein lipase is to break down fat, uh, triacylglycerol and now the fat is freed right. So we can understand the concentration of triacylglycerol is reduced in these particles. Now it is known as chylomicron remnant, okay, and it would be uptaken by the liver. So now we talk about another type of lipoprotein particle, which is known as VLDL or very low density lipoprotein, which is exclusively secreted by the liver, not by the intestine. So let's try to understand how VLDL is synthesized and secreted. So VLDL is generated de novo inside the liver, right? in the liver hepatocytes. So let's just zoom into a hepatocyte and try to understand. So liver hepatocyte gets input of glucose from the bloodstream. Now once glucose enters the liver hepatocyte, it would undergo uh, glycolysis and it would generate pyruvate. Eventually that pyruvate would be converted to acetyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA would eventually give rise to a TCA cycle and it would generate ATP in the electron transport chain. Now this acetyl-CoA can also be utilized inside the smooth endoplasmic reticula reticulum to make cholesterol. So cholesterol biogenesis can take place in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now other than that, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate which is a byproduct of the glycolysis pathway can be eventually used to make glycerols and there would be free fatty acids present in the cytosol itself. So free fatty acid, glycerol, would make triacylglycerol whereas cholesterol and phospholipid would also be packaged inside the Golgi bodies and ultimately it would generate a lipoprotein particle right and the protein part comes from these apolipoprotein components and from liver the apo B100 is the major apolipoprotein on VLDL and it is synthesized by a specific gene present in the nucleus. Okay, so the apolipoprotein B100 containing VLDL particles would be now released into the bloodstream. Now VLDL encounters HDL and from HDL, VLDL obtains other apolipoprotein such as apolipoprotein C2 and apolipoprotein E. So it is very important that VLDL interacts with the um, circulating HDL. Now as VLDL passes through the circulation, it also encounters the fatty tissues or the adipose tissues and on the adipose tissues there would be lipoprotein lipase. So just like we have seen for the chylomicron, the lipoprotein lipase would break down triglyceride and take it, right? So once VLDL is depositing quite a lot of free fatty acid in the adipose tissue, it would be now deficient in terms of triglyceride. It would have less amount of triglyceride. So that intermediate compound which has less amount of triglyceride, moderate amount of cholesterol and little bit amount of proteins as well is known as intermediate density lipoprotein. Notice that they have reduced in size as well. Now this IDL would actually interact. IDL is a very transient uh, species and it would interact with the HDL or high density lipoprotein. Now HDL would uptake a lot of triglyceride further from the IDL and in contrast it would give some amount of cholesterol and esterified cholesterol to the IDL. As a result this transient uh, molecule of IDL would have high level of cholesterol and it further lose the triglyceride so it would have low triglyceride very high level of cholesterol and it would be now 
known as LDL. So LDL has very high level of cholesterol and very low triglyceride. Now LDL has several surface components. Obviously, it would have apolipoprotein C and E, it would have apolipoprotein B100. But eventually these C and E would be taken by the HDL or it would be utilized to activate LPL. As a result, what would happen? It would be left with ApoB100. Now, how LDL is metabolized? That's the important question, okay? So, LDL's major function is to transport cholesterol from liver to the peripheral tissue. Or otherwise, it can return the cholesterol into the liver. So, obviously, let's say the LDL particle, which was actually formed by the liver in format of VLDL, would be eventually carrying the cholesterol to the testes or to the adrenal gland. Now, generated from the liver, the LDL particle would be useful for the adrenal cortex because the cholesterol that would be deposited by the LDL, it would generate several um, steroid hormones of adrenal cortex. Similarly, in case of testes, the cholesterol would be utilized to generate testosterone. So, LDL transport cholesterol and it is absolutely necessary for the body. But there is also a harmful side of LDL. LDL can deposit too much cholesterol in the artery walls and that is detrimental. It would narrow the space of the arteries and increase the risk of coronary artery disease or many other heart disease. Now, this situation is not only detrimental and it only block the blood flow, but it would also create a huge amount of inflammation because these macrophages or the dendritic cell would secrete inflammatory cytokine in that region. Overall, it can create several uh, uh, inflammatory symptoms. Now, I would like to imagine this phenomena just like a garbage truck. So, LDL particles are like garbage truck. They need to dump their garbage in the dump yard and the garbage would be recycled. So LDL need to dump their cholesterol in the organ that require cholesterol and it would be utilized. So no problem with that. But the problem comes when the garbage truck is dumping their loads beside the highway. One possibility is the highway would be blocked and there would be problem with transport. Similarly, for LDL, when it starts to dump the cholesterol on artery walls, it could be detrimental for the body. It can create inflammation, it can create obstruction in the blood flow and increase the risk of heart disease. So that was the overview of cholesterol as a lipoprotein particle. So we have a lot of similarity of cholesterol transport and cholesterol's pathophysiology with uh, the dump truck. Now, apart from that, cholesterol would be eventually uptaken by the liver. So in the liver hepatocyte, there are specific receptors against ApoB100, the LDL receptors, which would recognize the ApoB100 because the LDL particle has ApoB100. And ultimately it would undergo receptor mediated endocytosis and it would be uptaken by the liver hepatocytes and it would be recycled as per demand. So definitely the most important components here is the ApoB100 and the receptor mediated endocytosis of um, LDL particle which recognize ApoB100. Now we try to understand about HDL. Now HDL is the smallest apolipoprotein in terms of size but they have highest density of apolipoproteins. They have quite a lot of proteins, more than 40% of HDL is protein. So they have room to take triglyceride and cholesterol. So HDL interact with VLDL and um, LDL and what they do is exchange triglyceride in cost of apolipoprotein. So it gives proteins to VLDL and LDL whereas takes up triglyceride from these um, triglyceride and cholesterol esters from these species. Now the HDL is a reservoir for apolipoprotein. HDL can uptake 
esterified cholesterol as well as esterified. Now HDL helps in the esterification process of cholesterol and majorly HDL takes part in the reverse cholesterol transport. So it's a garbage pickup truck. So let's say even if you have garbage on the side of the highway and there is a pickup truck which is picking up the garbage, then it's fine, right? So HDL try to uptake excess amount of cholesterol which is dumped on the arteries and try to save our body from risk of cholesterol mediated uh, damages in our artery. So that is why HDL is also known as good cholesterol while LDL is known as bad cholesterol. So let's just take a quick overview that what we learned in this overall video. In this video, we have uh, a clear idea about what are the major apolipoproteins present in these uh, lipoprotein particles, right? So we have seen chylomicron contains ApoB48 as a signature apolipoprotein, whereas VLDL has ApoB100. Now, HDL is very rich with proteins. The composition of all of these lipoprotein particles are different. Now, chylomicron and VLDL are very enriched in triacylglycerol, whereas LDL is enriched in cholesterol. And HDL is found to be enriched with proteins. And we also looked at the source from which these particles are secreted. We have seen chylomicron is secreted from intestine, whereas these VLDL, IDL, LDL particles are generally coming from the liver, whereas HDL can be secreted from both liver and the intestine. So that goes um, a overall bird's eye view on this particular topic. But in subsequent videos, we'll be talking about all of these species in a lot more details and try to understand their characteristics, pathophysiology, and their biological significance. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.